And I got to point out, Kim and Jen up here in the front best seats, the Wind Trust best seats in the house, ladies. How is uh, the view? Kim and Jen. Uh, amazing. How are you? Uh, how that's pretty close. You can kind of kind of see up his nose. He's all good. All good. I didn't trim all this good. morning, Kim and Jen. <laughs> Big thanks to Wintrust for hooking that up. Anybody can sit there for any of our lounges. Just listen to 101 WKQX for the keyword to text in. That's what they did. And look at them. Look at them now. Can we talk about the album? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I haven't written one, but... Uh, well, you're like in the process of it, right? No, that's just what I say to get um, money out of the record label. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. I've written an album, yes. A whole album? I did do one, yeah. I and... And it's full, full of music. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about first where it was recorded. Typically at, I think you record at a friend's house? Yeah, I mean, my friend Sam, who I've been in bands with since I was like 18 years old, which is like two years ago, because I'm very <laughs> young, young, supple gentleman, you know, just, just ripe. <laughs> In the prime of my life. Um, so, yeah, we, we did a lot of the record um, at his parents. Well, first of all, we uh, I convinced the record label that I needed to rent out a, a chateau in Carmel to write the second album. Wow. Yeah, and they totally bought it, too. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't a fan of the video concept, but they were like, chateau, totally. I, yeah, they were super down for the chateau. So I got the chateau, Okay. and I didn't write anything oh. for a month. <laughs> Um, What'd you do for a month? It got really dry. Oh, actually, there was there was a personal trainer um, that came in that I met sort of out and about, and I don't know if he talked like this because he was a villain on CSI, <laughs> or whether he was just already perfect for the role. But he came over to dinner because I thought he was so amazing, and the first thing he said to everybody was, uh, "Yeah, you know, I had to uh, I had to leave Los Angeles. It's just it's just too turbulent out there, you know." Um, yeah, I had this altercation with a guy, you know, we, we, on the road, we both got out of our cars, I roundhouse kicked him in the sternum. Whoa. And he was on the floor bleeding, and I was like, do I stay, do I go? And now I live in Carmel. Um, Are you sure it wasn't the dude from CSI? <laughs> no, he was genuinely a villain on CSI. Like, yeah. that's a real thing. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we, we went to do a personal training session with him, me and, uh, this friend of mine who was helping out with some filming, and um, he said, "He's okay, Barnes. So um, we're not gonna we're not gonna work out in the gym today, okay? Today your dojo is gonna be the outdoors, all right? Now you're not strictly supposed to hike there, but I know the sheriff, so it's cool. Fast forward to us like scaling this fence in the middle of like the California wilderness, and um, he goes, okay, so uh, I'm gonna flip a coin. Heads we do mushrooms, tails we don't." <laughs> Tails. All right, let's do mushrooms anyway, though. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we all like take this fistful of mushrooms, and we're like hiking up this hill, and um, as we're going up, and everything's, <laughs> he goes. Oh, by the way, I've never done this hike without getting a few ticks. So, uh, <laughs> so look out for ticks. <laughs> Why are you telling me this now? I'm like tripping balls. And it's suddenly that we approach this huge ravine and like the whole path is crumbled into this ravine hundreds of feet below. And this guy's like huge and muscular and his like great grandfather was a baseball player and like everyone in his family has been sports and actors. Uh, so he just like launches himself across this shit. He's like, and like grabs the side of the mountains, like pull, come on, birds, it's fun. <laughs> I'm like there in like my velvet jacket and my pointy boots. <laughs> <laughs> like scrambling across, clinging on to like the bits of shrubbery that I can find. And then we would get to the other side of the mountain and um, <laughs> and my friend is covered in all these little black dots. Oh, no. um, and he comes out and she starts freaking out because they're all ticks. And he's like, Barnes, don't worry, don't worry. You know, I've seen this all the time. He's picking, picking them off like they're nothing, you know, like they're fucking bits of candy or something. Just <laughs> and we get in the car and we start driving. And he goes, uh, oh, my God, there's, there, there's one in my arm. There's one in my, ow, it's one, one of my leg is digging into my leg. Motherfucker, I've, I've actually never seen this many ticks before, Barnes. I'm going to be honest with you. This is fucked up. we got to get in the shower right the fuck now. <laughs> so he's like slams the pedal to the metal. 
like screaming around corners and shit. We get back to his house. We all jump in the shower. My friend runs out completely naked with like five ticks in her neck. There's like screaming. He's screaming, picking him off of her. Oh my God. Ah! Um, and I return to the studio uh, <laughs> 12 hours later, having said I was going for an hour's workout session. Um, they're like, dude, where have you been? And I'm like, I, 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 I don't want to talk about it. I got to go to bed. <laughs> And that's what I did in Carmel. Wow. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't hashtag that. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a long one. So yeah, I didn't write any music there. And then we ran out of budget. So I had to record uh, most of the early stages of the album in my friend's parents' house. Tick free? Um, tick free. That's nice. Totally tick free. <laughs> um, which was weird because like, you know, his parents lived there. So they would like, wake me up at the morning. Hello, Barnes. Would you like a cup of tea? <laughs> can a man masturbate in here without being <laughs> interrupted? Actually, you can stay. <laughs> at least they weren't pushing. Tell, tell me you're proud of me while you're doing it. <laughs> well, um, I'm a good boy. You see what we have to deal with every day. <laughs> so they didn't offer you any mushrooms or anything? <laughs> it was really funny because it was so boring in this house. Like, it was raining sideways and it was the middle of winter and like, we're in the middle of nowhere in England. It was really dark all day. And I noticed that Sam's dad was like pottering around the house because he re he's retired going, oh, yeah, Jane filled the house up with all these bloody ornaments. They're just bloody cluttering the place up. So to pass the time, Sam and I would go to the local charity shop every day <laughs> and we'd pick out like five or six items that look very similar to the other items in the house so you know like if there's like a waving sailor pottery thing we'd buy like a milkmaid <laughs> or if there's a dolphin we'd get like a little porpoise statue and we slowly started filling the house up <laughs> with all these ornaments <laughs> until it was just like jam-packed <laughs> with useless crap <laughs> That sounds like some kind of medieval torture. <laughs> and then I overheard this conversation like, <laughs> like, well, I didn't buy them, Jane. <laughs> of course I didn't buy them. Well, I didn't buy them. Well, who bloody bought them? <laughs> and it was me. <laughs> <laughs> but we also made a lot of music. Uh, oh. <laughs> and in a totally roundabout way, like the album was very influenced by making music in that house because it felt like regressing into the womb you know like I hadn't written there since I first signed my first record deal with Sam so all the tunes ended up being about like nostalgia and you know being stuck in your past and the strange trials and tribulations one goes through in the journey into adulthood um, I sat in the fetal position a lot <laughs> okay. I'm not even kidding like I, I, we went nuts we actually went crazy two people aren't meant to be in a room together for more than three weeks and not go anywhere other than the charity shop especially with all those things around all you those things staring at me with their Just beaten porcelain in. eyes <laughs> um, so okay about growing up what's one piece of advice that mm, pretty much adult Barnes Courtney would give to young, child, innocent, stars in his eyes, Barnes. Star, stars in his eyes? Oh, me? What yeah, I'd you. Give, advice I'd give to my younger self? You now, which is pretty much a grown-up. I, I am a grown-up, that's true. The younger... What I really like about being a grown-up is that my mom used to have this rule where you like, this is the stupidest rule, where you buy shit from the supermarket and you're not allowed to eat it until you get home. Now I'm like <laughs> in the grocery store stuffing my face before I've even paid for that shit. Like, oh, look at me now, mom! <laughs> What are you going to do? I'm 28. <laughs> Barnes, why are you calling me? It's four in the morning where I am. <laughs> what are you going to do about it, Mom? I just ate a whole pack of Oreos. I probably have diabetes. <laughs> Did she at least say she was proud of you? <laughs> she, I think she does by default, you know. <laughs> um, I, would, I would tell little Barnes on a serious note, like, if you want to do something in your life and you have a dream that there is no point in having a plan B, you know, you don't go for a doctorate and study law in case the doctor thing doesn't work out. It's an extremely difficult thing you're undertaking as a musician or like whatever profession you go into. And I would just say, if you love music, then fuck everything else and just do that. 
That was a very nice sort of like affirming thump at the end. Somebody just quit their job. <laughs> just do so that. Like, you know what? That's right. <laughs> yeah. All this popsicle sandwich. Anarchy. 